going guys winter kills here and welcome back to a brand new deck profile this time around for pure mech knight uh, i realize it's been a while since i've done an update for one um but it really um hasn't needed an update i guess uh since you know until now um and of course with the release of dual overload um we did get a pretty nice support card in there uh via the lid the world key blade master new link to monster that really does help out the strategy quite a bit if you ask me. Now, I haven't had a chance to actually go out and purchase the product yet uh, since I would rather buy from my local game store than online, so I still got a proxy within the extra deck, but you guys will still be able to get the gist of the entire build. And uh, with my friend uh, piling this deck as of late, I've been able to sort of, you know, uh, get some inspiration, some ideas from his build, as well as my past experience with this deck and some testing that I've been doing on my stream by the way link to my twitch down below if you haven't checked that out yet and uh yeah excited to bring you guys an update nonetheless also i want to mention a quick shout out to our sponsor over at imperium duelist if you guys haven't noticed already uh this new playmat uh their first playmat of 2020 is a uh, crossover uh between Yu-Gi-Oh and super smash brothers um the ultimate brawl mat as you can see here on the other side uh, you've got the final destination uh, stage with uh, a whole slew of characters here uh, and some very very nice artwork uh, and then of course on the other side they're all fighting against uh, the giant hand uh, and it does have the logo there sort of in the center of the mat very very soft cloth fabric I love this play mat I love the uh, the color style and it's more of a pastel coloring um, the artwork is absolutely incredible um, so if you guys want to pick up this mat, you can get it for 10% off using my discount code when it kills 10 off. You can also pick up one of their new deck boxes as well, or any of their new armor tournament ready sleeves. They come in a bunch of new colors now, I believe amber, orange, uh, pink, yellow, and purple now. So don't forget to check all that and get it for 10% off too, which is a fantastic deal. Um, and if you guys are buying anything on TCG player, of course, don't forget to use my affiliate link. And if you want to become a member of the channel and help support that way, Click the join button down below. All right, so you guys know how we do this. First, we'll start with a standard profile where we have three copies of Mech Knight Purple Nightfall, then three copies of Mech Knight Blue Sky, just two copies of Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse, one Mech Knight Red Moon, one Mech Knight Yellow Star, one Mech Knight Green Horizon, and one Mech Knight Abram. And that is it for the Mech Knight lineup. Then for our normal summons outside of Abram, we have one Nightmare Corruptor Ibley and two copies of Aperia. Now this ideally would be the third copy of Aperia, but I still think the one Ibley is actually pretty nice to tack in for this current format. Then I have two copies of Gamma Seal for some of our interaction removal cards, two copies of Phantasme, two copies of Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, and two copies of DD Crow. And that rounds off the rest of the monsters. We'll start with the spells now where we have three copies of World Legacy's Memory. Then we have two copies of Instant Fusion, two copies of Mind Control, two copies of Pinpoint Landing, one World Legacy Succession, one World Legacy Key, and one Upstart Goblin. That rounds out the spells. And then lastly for our traps here, we have two copies of the best trap card in the entire deck, the World Legacy Secret. Then we have one World Legacy Whispers, uh, and then we have two copies of the Infinite uh, Impermanence. So yeah, that is going to round out the profile. For the main deck now we will jump into the extra deck where we have our link fours to start we have boral sword dragon mech knight crusader avermax one uh blacklister soldier soldier of chaos one nightmare unicorn one mech knight spectrum supreme then we have three copies of mech knight of the morning star still playing three of this card um i did really see no reason not to play three especially since you can still fit this card in here i don't think you need more than one of these um by the way this is the new link monster that really does have some pretty good synergy with this deck uh, it is a proxy, but it is Lib the World uh, Key Blade Master, I believe that's his actual name. Takes two monsters, says cannot be linked summon unless there is a World Legacy card in your graveyard. During your main phase, you can set one World Legacy spell or trap from your deck, but if you have no World Legacy monsters in your graveyard, it cannot be activated this turn. And this says if this link summon card is sent to the graveyard as link material, you can shuffle one card in the field of the deck. So it is really good for at least turn one, setting up some uh, pretty powerful negation boards and uh, disruption boards with your World Legacy spells and traps like Memories and Secrets. And then going second, it can be great just for a free removal card. Uh, and then you're also playing cards like Ding in the extra deck and Unicorn. So you can remove a, a board pretty easily, uh, especially with this card now. Uh, then we have one Nightmare Phoenix, one Al Mirage, one Link Aribo, one Link Spider, one Dingirsu, and of course the one Tear the Thousand Eyes Restrict. And that's going to round out the main deck. Now we'll go into the breakdown. All right, so here I've laid out uh, basically the starter cards for this particular deck. 
um, cards that help our engine get going, uh, things that often have the easiest activation requirement, um, and things that help to enable our overall strategy. So of course we have three purple nightfall. Um, basically, like all mech knights can be special summoned into the same column where there are two or more cards that can be just on your field, your opponent's field, or a combination of both. But basically, he can banish any mech knight on the field that targets that mech knight as cost, uh, and then he can banish it until the end of the next standby phase, and basically add any mech knight from your deck uh, to your hand with a different name than Purple Nightfall. Um, so this card is fantastic. He's constantly reoccurring advantage uh, and can help dodge, uh, you know, attacks and things like that uh, when combined with your uh, Morning Star. So it's pretty cool um, and can just dodge certain things, like all sorts of things. Um, it's a fantastic card. Then we have Blue Sky. Same summoning conditions, obviously, but when he is special summoned or normal summoned, um, you basically get to add car Mac Knight monsters from your deck uh, up to the number of cards in your opponent's column upon that summon. Uh, so this card can search up to one, to two, to three sometimes uh, Mac Knight monsters off a single summon if they're not playing around Mac Knights inherently, um, which a lot of people tend not to because they often forget about this archetype, which is pretty funny. Uh, then Mac Knight of Rom, other than just saying check this out, this card is actually pretty important to the strategy. Uh, it is a searchable normal summon, but a normal summon nonetheless. Normal summons in this deck are extremely important uh, because a lot of these normal summons can be turned into Link 1s. Uh, some of them offer different benefits, of course, um, but they become uh, Link 1s, which uh, give us a monster in our extra monster zone, which allows us to, with any other spell or trap, we can set in order to open up a column on our turn, uh, turn 1 essentially. Um, so Avram is a perfect card that can do that. Uh, or if you find yourself having very limited cards to work with for making columns and you still need to get into Morningstar, let's say you're only able to go purple into Indigo, um, and then you have, or purple and then to like a blue, and blue can only search you this, and you have no other like ways to get a Mac Knight on board because you have no columns, um, you know, you can just use this to search this, normal it, uh, and then link off into Morningstar and continue to play from there. And then next here we have Aperia. This card is still probably hands down one of the best normal summons for this particular deck. Uh, sugar because like Avram and like Ibli, uh, this card just becomes a Link 1 and that is the El Mirage. Um, and it also replaces itself because uh, if it's nor if it's summoned period, you get to draw a card, um, which is incredible. So it's setting you up a column and also replacing itself with a fresh new card in your hand uh, in order to continue making plays. So this card is fantastic for that. Uh, then one Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. Um, I'm playing just one because uh, I didn't want to play more. I think four normal summons is probably enough for this deck. Uh, I didn't want to play any more, um, and I didn't want to like get rid of Aperia completely because I think this card is still very, very strong. Uh, but this card is great simply for uh, if you know if you have to go first. Um, it sucks that it's not entirely searchable, but neither is Aperia. Uh, but this card is great because if you have to go first, you can normal it, uh, link it to Al Mirage, put it in the same column as the Al Mirage, uh, and then it makes the Blue Sky Search effect live turn one, and it also blocks against Nibiru, and especially with Master Rule Five just around the corner. Um, a lot of decks may not be relying and playing so many links to easily link this away with um, So I feel like this card can be a lot more potent uh, in times to come um, So yeah, this card's incredible um, Get and again these cards start your plays by simply allowing you to make a column turn one Because uh, that is this deck's biggest weakness So having things built in within the deck uh, that not only help going second But do help greatly going first is very nice and helps the deck become more versatile and then world legacy memory It's a quick play e tally basically for any mech knight uh, once you play it, you're locked into Mech Knights for the rest of the turn, and the monster, if it doesn't leave the field, is returned to your hand during the end phase. So this is great for helping tutor out uh, any Mech Knight you need, whether it be to negate a card off of your secrets or to get a search off purple. Um, it's just an incredible card all around. And those are, in my opinion, uh, the starters for the deck. Anywhere between 11 and 14 is usually a, a decent number to be at. All right, so next up here, we're gonna show off the superior extenders for the deck. Now, a lot of these cards in here have different roles. Um, and we'll talk more about that later. Um, it's all right to have uh, certain cards cross roles because it makes our deck a little bit more versatile as well. So don't get too confused there. Uh, so we have our two Mech Knight Indigo Eclipse. We have our one Red Moon, our one Yellow Star, and our one Green Horizon. Um, and then we also have on top of that our two Pinpoint Landings, our two Mind Controls, our two Instant Fusions, our Succession, and our Key. Now you may be already understanding where this cross role compatibility is sort of coming from. Uh, in the form of these removal cards that we have here uh, and here. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But Indigo Eclipse, um, it is a Mech Knight name, which is uh, very, very important for this deck because obviously you need something to search off of your blue and your purple. 
because uh, of course they cannot search themselves. But Indigo is the key, like one of the key pieces to this entire deck strategy, the fact that he can target any Mech Knight and move it into a different column. It is not a hard once per turn, so if you have multiple copies, you can use the effect um, you know, up to the number of copies that you have, um, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, this card is really, really potent though when compared, uh, when paired with the World Legacy Key card, uh, the World Legacy Whisper, and of course the World Legacy Secret, because these cards allow you to negate, uh, trap, monster, and spell effects that activate in the same column as a Mech Knight. Um, so having a Mech Knight that can move uh, other Mech Knights into different columns, of course, is very beneficial to the entire strategy. And of course, with Red Moon and Yellow Star, uh, these guys can both banish Mech Knights uh, respectively from the graveyard. This one will destroy a face-up monster in its same column, and this one will destroy a spell or trap in the same column as it. So uh, a lot of times with Indigo, you can use these guys to pop multiple things because their effects to destroy are not once per turn. Uh, Green Horizon is pretty neat as well. He's just an extra name. His effect isn't too great. Um, late game, it is nice to have extra Mech Knight names still in the deck to be able to resolve Blue Skies and Purple Nightfalls. Um, but he does have the ability, if he attacks a card in the same column, he can add a Mech Knight back from the grave. Um, so that card uh, is really nice. It isn't the greatest um, effect, but sometimes if you have, uh, per se, Morningstar up in Indigo, uh, and Morningstar, um, you know, is on the field, the effect applies where... Uh, if a Mech Knight monster is attacking or attacked by a card that is not in the same column as it, it does not destroy the battle and you take no battle damage. Um, so the way you can sort of get around that uh, effect where he has to attack in the same column, um, basically can attack any monster and he'll still live and you'll get a card back out of it, um, the way I think at least this ruling would work. Um, if he attacks and the attack is declared, um, you know, you, the effect will activate to add back, but before damage calculation everything goes through, you can use Indigo to move it out of that column, and then Morning Start's effect will protect it. Um, so that is a pretty nice card to have. Uh, Pinpoint Landing. We all know what this card does. It's a continuous spell, so that's great for making columns within the deck. It can also be set and activated the same turn. Um, but yeah, basically if a monster special summon from your end your side of the field, you get to draw a card, and you can only use that effect once per turn. If you don't use that effect, it gets destroyed during the end phase. Um, so this card is great, it allows you to chain block your blue sky, um, and allows you just to get constantly recurring uh, resources, seeing new cards every turn, which sometimes this deck does struggle with, um, because the draw power is limited, you really can't play Desires in this deck without adding more bricks on top of it by playing more cards like red, yellow, and indigo uh, within the main deck, so uh, I think Pinpoint is okay, I've always been a little back and forth on Pinpoint, but I'm really starting to open up to it as of late. Um, just a pretty decent card all around. Mind Control and Institution, of course. Uh, these cards, of course, are great removal cards, which we'll talk about them as removal cards later on. Um, but your best card in the extra deck is Morningstar, which basically requires two monsters, including a Mech Knight. So we can take advantage of these cards that allow us to take our opponent's monsters and combine them with any of our Mech Knights to get into Morningstar, uh, which is incredible. And these are also normal spells, which means we can set them in the same column as another card our opponent has, best summon a Mech Knight, and then flip them up. So they sort of get dual purpose within the deck. Uh, then Succession, of course, is a searchable monster reborn through that Mech Knight Morningstar. It is also a normal spell as well, can be set, and then played uh, in that same turn. World Legacy Key, we know it can lock down trap cards in the same column that Mech Knights are in, um, but it also has the effect to add back a banished Mech Knight or World Legacy monster. So, late game, if you have banished uh, cards off Red Moon, Yellow, um, or things that have been banished off like purple or whatever, you can use key to get them back immediately to your hand in order to keep making plays. So this does help to add to longevity of your plays. So that's it for the superior extenders, quite a bit of them. Um, and again, like a lot of the Mac Knights in here could also be sort of considered starter cards in their own right. Um, just really depends on the scenario. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at sort of the additional extenders for the deck. So for our additional extenders, there's really not too much to be said. A lot of the cards that were superior extenders, again, could cross rolls into the additional extender category. That's why you see these repeats here. Um, Mech Knights in this deck, really, they just serve purposes of just being names, essentially, to have search targets off of your blue sky and your purple and to have multiple chances and multiple different Mech Knights to be able to swarm the field with, because the Mech Knights themselves, each name can only be special summoned uh, by their own effect to the field once per turn, so the more names you have, the more opportunities you have to start swarming the field, making big link monsters, and pushing for a lot of damage. And then, of course, the two pinpoint landing, uh, again, these could be superior extenders as well, maybe even starter cards also you could consider it, um, but this card, like I said, we talked about earlier, it can chain block cards, um, and just allow you to see more cards, 
um, and potentially be a card for your opponent to try to worry about to try and remove uh, so you don't get advantage off of it but it does allow you to essentially draw into other cards to help continue and enable uh, plays that you have uh, or are wanting to make anyways so uh, that's really it for the additional extenders uh, like I said a lot of the superior extenders and additional extenders will have some uh, cross rolls so um, if you see, again, some repeats, don't be too surprised. Now we're going to take a look at defensive cards. For the first part of the defense category, we have our responsive defense cards here. Basically, these cards have to be activated within a certain window or in response to a certain situation. Of course, Fantastical Dragon Phantasma has to be activated when our opponent is performing a Link Summon, and Ash has to be activated whenever our opponent is adding a card, special summoning a card, or sending a card from the deck. Uh, you know, or sending it to the graveyard or whatever it may be. Um, of course, Ash has to be activated in any of those three specific situations. Um, these cards are really strong, of course, but, uh, you know, chainable defensive cards, which can be activated at any point and still uh, have an impact on our opponent, are oftentimes more uh, preferable because, again, they can just be activated whenever and we don't have to wait uh, for a specific window. But Phantasme is incredible in this deck. Uh, it does get you a large body on board to work with. It does help you to unbrick hands. This card overall is fantastic. You know, no pun intended with its name. Um, but it also, you know, does provide protection as well. Just an all-around incredible card. Um, and I don't think this card is necessarily going to get worse as Master Rule 5 goes on. Links are definitely still going to be played. Um, you can't, uh, you, know, you know, deny that fact. Links are not going anywhere. Um, still probably the best summoning mechanic within the game. And then, of course, Ash Blossom. This is a card I'm growing more and more fond of as of late because it helps stop uh, really big power plays um, that, you know, people aren't really trying to punish in, within their deck because not really too many people are playing this card. Um, so a lot of, you know, really big and free plays just to go get to go through. Um, but I, I like having the Ash within the main deck because, uh, again, this is a primarily going second deck as well for those that aren't already aware. Um, so having more hand traps to slow our opponent down uh, is, of course, ideal. And this card can be normal summoned uh, to make El Mirage as well if we need sort of a last minute column setup. All right, so here we have our chainable defense cards, which can be activated, of course, at any given point during the game, starting with DD Crow. Um, this card, like it says, it can just be activated whenever to banish any card out of our opponent's graveyard. It's also not a once per turn, so if we happen to have, like, multiple DD Crow, we can use multiple DD Crow and get the most value out of the card. Uh, and I still feel like this card is pretty decent right now. There were really no other hand traps that I really wanted to play within the main deck. I was thinking about Droll or adding in possibly more Ash Blossoms or playing Effect Failure. But at the end of the day, I still like having the DD Crow within the main deck. Um, and then next up, we have the two World Legacy Secrets. This card, of course, can be activated at any point. Um, but basically, when it is activated, you can special summon a level 5 or higher monster from your graveyard. Um, and basically... Uh, and negates any opponent's monster effect that activates in the same column as a mech knight you control. That is the biggest, you know, you know, factor with this card is the fact that it basically can get you multiple monster negations when paired with the Indigo Eclipse um, because you can revive it uh, in response to a, an effect activating. It will get negated, and then if they have another effect that activates in a different column, you can use Indigo Eclipse to move over to negate that other effect. Um, so this card is absolutely fantastic. Searchable off Morningstar, and I think definitely justifiable at playing two. Uh, then in Permanence, this card is fantastic all around. Uh, yes, it can conflict sometimes with Phantasmate, but if you happen to draw this off Phantasmate or have it in the same hand as Phantasmate, and Phantasmate comes up first, this card is easily um, put back off of the Phantasmate into the deck, no problem, uh, no questions asked. can also be set uh, simply uh, going first or second uh, to be able to create columns if need be. Uh, then we have the Whispers. This card I'm also playing here now, uh, mainly because of Lib. And we have easier access to get, uh, you know, cards like uh, our World Legacy cards. So I wanted to, uh, you know, sort of experiment with playing, you know, uh, all of the World Legacy negation cards. One for spells, one for uh, monster, and of course, key for traps. Um, but this card, again, it can be activated at any point. And when you do activate it, you can target level 5 or monster in the field and it gains 1,000 attack and defense until the end of this turn. Uh, so this card is really nice uh, to be able to help get over monsters that are over 2,500. Um, and of course, again, a searchable off Lib, searchable off Morningstar, fantastic card all around. And again, can get multiple spell negations, uh, especially when paired with the Indigo Eclipse. Uh, so yeah, that is it 
So yeah, that is pretty much it for the chainable defense category. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at removal. All right, so here we have laid out our removal cards. And again, you can see a lot of cards that have already appeared in other categories. This, like, this deck is just extremely versatile. And this sort of breakdown really just goes to show, uh, you know, why it is. Um, of course, Red Moon and Yellow Star both can remove uh, monsters and, you know, spells and traps, respectively. Um, really fantastic cards. So not only can they be extenders, but they are really good at removing uh, back row for yellow and, of course, monsters for red. Gamma Seal, this card is extremely versatile. Not only does it help remove cards, but if your opponent has, ha happens to have any back row on their field, uh, you can special it in the same column that that back row is in. And then you basically just created yourself a free column at the same time as removing a very powerful monster that they might have that you're having a hard time dealing with. Uh, and of course, if you open multiples of these, you can special summon the other from your hand. It's a level eight, so combined with purple, and of course, indigo gets you easy access, easier access um, into that Dingirsu, which allows for even more removal and more protection. Of course, mind control, no brainer. This card is fantastic. This is the reason it went to two. Great removal card, and it can also be set to make calms. Instant fusion, again, same thing, can go for a thousand ice restrict. Uh, to take cards, make columns, and also uh, make columns itself as the spell card. Um, you could also experiment with playing Winda with this card, and then linking the Winda and a Mech Knight away uh, for uh, Morningstar, and then Morningstar grabs Secrets, and Secrets revives, per se, the Winda uh, to help stun lock the opponent. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much it for the breakdown. Uh, we only have two other cards to talk about is World Legacy Key. Again, we talked about this being um, a, uh, you know, an extender of sorts. It is also really a floodgate uh, for trap cards. And I guess you could argue that um, that Whispers and the uh, Memory are also floodgates as well. So we do play technically floodgates within the main deck, turning off spells, traps, and monsters. Um, so I just figured I'd point that out. You know, Key does have essentially another role within the deck. Other than adding back Banish cards, it can turn off traps. And then the last card within the main deck, the Upstart Goblin, to get us under 40 cards to play 39 cards to have our deck be as consistent as possible. So now we're just going to run through the deck real quick and just talk about the side deck and cards that I would possibly take out, um, you know, to side in other cards. Like, uh, could be Nibiru, Zafion, uh, the Artifact Package, or Twin Twisters and things like that. I'll put up a mock side deck on the screen if I remember to do so. Um, but cards that could easily be sided out. Uh, consist of cards like key against decks that don't play a lot of back row. Uh, even whispers arguably could get sided out as well for decks that arguably don't even play a lot of spells. Um, you know, Sky Striker, of course, isn't tier one anymore, so the card isn't fantastic as it used to be. Um, but again, I mean, it's still pretty solid and could easily uh, be sided out. A copy of Pinpoint Landing can go out. Same thing with the green. Um, as far as the rest of the Mech Knight engine is concerned, I would probably keep it as is. The Ibli could stand to get sided out also. A copy of Impermanence could go. And of course, if the matchup really calls for it, the Fantastical Dragon Phantasmes uh, could go out of the main deck as well if we aren't playing against any link heavy strategies, whether they be Altergeist or Subterror, um, you know, any of those really stun heavy decks. Um, these cards, of course, could be sided out. Um, I guess the Kaijus could go as well, but Kaijus really are good with dealing with a myriad of things. Um, but yeah, I think this right here is pretty good. You have a solid eight slots to work with with this particular build. Anyways, and of course, it depends on the matchup that you're playing against uh, in order to determine what you'll be siding in against. Now, particularly, this deck does have a hard time with back row heavy decks. So siding in cards, like I said, like Zafion and Twin Twister are going to be much more beneficial. Um, and of course, the artifact package is insane within this deck um, because not only can you just, of course, use Sanctum to get them out, but you can use a card like World Legacy Secrets to bring back Scythe turn after turn, especially since you are playing multiple copies of Secrets since Scythe is a level five or higher monster, can be revived off this and used again during the opponent's turn, as I mentioned, to continually stun locking them. Same thing uh, in concept behind Winda, really. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for this deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, like I said, not much really has changed too much after Dual Overload with this deck other than this card. Uh, and this card is absolutely fantastic. If you guys haven't gotten your hands on this card, I would highly recommend doing so. Um, I'm going to be doing a test hand video uh, soon after I record this. So if you guys are interested in seeing some sort of like combos, so to speak, or how the deck sort of plays out, you guys have that to look forward to probably coming within the next day or so. So yeah, don't forget to check that out. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Again, don't forget to check out Imperium Duelist and of course my affiliate link to TCG Player. 
And uh, yeah, as always, guys, we're going to kill sign out. We'll see you guys in the next one.